Croiso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we do sew alongs. If you're part of my Discord, and honestly, if you're not, you should be, it's a super fun space. You'll be familiar with this already. But for those of you who aren't, we are doing an all year sew along with a new phase each season. Each phase is a different layer of clothing so that one could conceivably make a whole new outfit over the course of the year. It's me, I'm one. So I'm going to take this opportunity to make myself a whole new middle class late period outfit. Like many people, my shape has changed over the course of the pandemic. Now that is a morally neutral thing, bodies are neither good nor bad. It does however present a practical problem when the clothes I made before no longer properly fit. You may recall that I had to do some pretty extensive surgery on my wine colored kirtle the last time I wore it, and even then it didn't end up fitting the way I wanted. And not only that, but the only Elizabethan shirt I have is ages old and not up to my personal standards of construction and historicity. I made it well before Tornado was born and it's been low on my priority list of things to replace. But since partner's preferred time period is pretty late and since we have some plans to overhaul his kit this year, I figured it would be a good idea to have at least one outfit to match. And since the typical tutor came out quite recently, I thought I would also use this opportunity to put the book through its paces and see how the patterns shake out. So everyone go grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking Calma Tea from Homebrewed Harvest in New Orleans. My apprentice Kara got it for me on her way to Gulf War. It is a, a delicate herbal blend with rose and lavender, sweet mint, lemon verbena, and is meant to set your mind and heart at ease. Let's get into it. Obviously, the first thing I'm going to need is material. I want to keep this underlayer as light and breathable as I can, so I'm using handkerchief weight linen for everything except the lining of cuffs and collar, which will be a medium weight linen for stability. Since this shirt is, like many pre-20th century undergarments, rectangularly constructed, the best way for me to get straight cuts is to pull threads. I'm using the typical Tudor directions for the man's shirt with frills on page 62 since I'd like to be able to wear this with both masculine and feminine clothing. In the past, I've made ruffles by folding the long strip of linen in half and gathering it, but this book directed me to hem one long side before gathering the other. This is more time consuming, but it is consistent with extant clothing pieces from the era. I'll attach the long strips together by folding the ends over and hooking them together so that when felled, the raw ends will be enclosed within the seam. The hem will be a simple rolled hem. Once all the strips are hemmed, I'll mark a half inch seam allowance on cuff and collar pieces with friction markers and on the frill pieces by drawing a thread a half inch away from the raw edge. Then I can mark half, quarter, and eighth divisions on cuffs, collar, and frills, pin them in place, and pull the thread to gather them up before sewing them down by machine. Because the frills are relatively narrow, I'm going to gather them by sewing a running stitch by hand with quilting thread, which is sturdier than sewing thread.
After that, I will finish up the cuffs and collar by sewing the other side down along three sides, leaving one long edge open for attaching them to the sleeves and shirt body. I'll clip corners, turn them right side out, and give them a quick press before moving on to the next step. I'm marking how long I want my shoulder seams to be in order to know where to insert the triangular shoulder gusset. Most of these shirts feature fairly wide body pieces, resulting in a drop shoulder situation that I'm particularly fond of. The shoulder gusset is added in order to accommodate the slope of the trapezius muscle, otherwise the shirt will pull and wrinkle oddly between the top point of the shoulder and the armpit. Once those seams are sewn, I'll fill them in the usual way by cutting down one side of the seam by half and folding the longer side over and securing it to the body material with a whip stitch. After the shoulders are sewn, I will cut and hem the front neck slit. This time, I went with Enya's magic veil stitch to keep the hem as narrow as possible. The bottom of the slit is finished with a buttonhole stitch and secured against dripping with a bar tack. Next, I'll sew the armpit gussets into the sleeves and the long sleeve seam, leaving about 3 inches at the wrist opening. Then all of those seams will get felled and hemmed as well. When I fell seams, I fell to the outside of smaller pieces like shoulder and armpit gussets, and towards the back on seams between equal pieces like shoulder, body, and sleeve seams.
Now it's time to attach the cuffs and collar. I'll do this in precisely the same way as I did the frills. Mark a half inch seam allowance, run gathering stitches, use the divide and conquer method to pin the fabric equally, pull the gathers tight and sew everything down by machine. After completely forgetting to film the bit where I tried on the shirt body and marked where I want the bottom of the sleeve gusset to connect, I'm going to attach the sleeves to the shirt. I've marked three inches to either side of the shoulder seam to indicate where the sleeve head will be gathered. Then I will sew the sleeves on from the bottom point of the gusset to that mark and gather the remainder of the sleeve into that six inch area. Felling gathered seams is a giant pain. I usually fell the gathered seam allowance over the top of the smooth only because it's slightly easier to fell the seam to the piece of fabric that isn't gathered. But either way, it's a giant pain in the ass. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and Croissant Army makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see me make the closures for the shirt. For the collar ties, I'll be finger loop braiding some silk thread, which I got from AO and Weaver, of course. I learned this braid ages ago and have since come to understand that I do it wrong, but at this point it's muscle memory and I was running out of time to get this finished. One of my goals this summer is to reprogram my brain to do this braid correctly.
I hate ties on my shirt cuffs, so I'll be using button and loop instead. The closure is formed by working buttonhole stitch over a few loops of thread. I usually alternate the direction of the stitches in order to prevent twisting. And these buttons aren't anything special, just some white plastic buttons I had on hand, but I may eventually switch them out for pewter or bone buttons later. Thank you for joining me today. I am really satisfied with how this shirt came out and super excited about continuing on with this outfit. If you would be interested in joining our 2023 sew along, the link to the Discord is in the description box below. It'll take you to the welcome page and you'll see a personal message there that will direct you on how to read and agree to the rules and gain access to the rest of the server. Our spring phase will be to make a torso covering of some kind. Whether that's a tunic or a kirtle or a corset or a waistcoat, it's pretty open to interpretation. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you like, and consider sharing this or any of my videos to social media. 
If you're interested in finding me on said social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links as well as the link to my Kofi will all be in the description box below. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew.